In my Meg Griffin timeline, 99% of the comment section was nothing but love for Meg, with most of you writing that the Meg bashing stopped being funny years ago. And for many, she was even their favourite character. And while Family Guy is a cartoon and her abuse is written in for laughs, that doesn't mean we can't feel some empathy for her. And I think one of the reasons why people connect with her so much is because most of us have felt like a Meg at least once in our lives. So in this video, I want to talk about Meg's evolution from being a normal teenage girl to the show's punching bag, taking blows from almost any character. But first, a huge thank you to this video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN can connect to hundreds of different servers worldwide, allowing you to unlock TV shows and movies not available in your country. For example, for anyone living in the US with Disney+, Plus, you do not have access to stars, meaning that you're missing out on tons of content, like Family Guy, Bob's Burgers and American Dad. But with NordVPN, just switch to the UK server and voila, you've got access to hundreds of episodes of animated shows. It works with Netflix too. In the UK, I've been watching Studio Ghibli movies and I was shocked to see that it's not available in the US Netflix. So all you've got to do is simply switch your server and up they come. And the great thing is, is that you can use it on up to six devices. So go to nordvpn.com forward slash timelines to get the two year plan with an exclusive deal plus one month completely free. It's also risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Get NordVPN today. Meg in the beginning. At the beginning of Family Guy, Meg wasn't really the character she'd come to be, and I mean quite literally, she wasn't even played by the same actress, with Rachel McFarlane and Lacey Schaber both taking a stab at the character before Mila Kunis settled into the role in season 2. It's just not fair! I finally get a date with Kevin, and he gets vaporized! The eldest of the three Griffin kids, Meg was a relatively standard teenage girl attending high school in those early episodes. Most of her plot lines were riffs on traditional teenage storylines, albeit with the dark twist that Family Guy is famous for. Meg got a job as a waitress and claimed that Stewie was her drug addicted child and she even got a love interest that she wanted nothing to do with in Neil Goldman. During this period of the show, Meg was defined more by her average nature and embarrassment of her family. In essence, she, and to a lesser extent Lois, were the straight men to compare to the rest of the cast. She wasn't as inherently weird as Chris, or as memorable as Brian or Stewie, or as uniquely chaotic as Peter. Meg was more or less the more normal character in a show that thrived on being bizarre, and she suffered for it quite literally. Meg the Punchline Family Guy has a unique history considering it was actually cancelled twice before it found major success. Following a last minute reprieve with season 2, the show was formally cancelled by the end of season 3. By that point, there had been jokes about Meg's unpopularity, like Peter comparing her to a house cat, or her only superpower in a non-canon short being her slightly sharper fingernails. Is that all you can do? Ow! That kinda hurt! But while the jokes were a consistent element of her character, they didn't necessarily define her. Yet. But when the show returned with season 4, rescued by a surge in popularity for the show, bolstered by strong DVD sales and the show becoming a hit for Cartoon Network's adult swim block, the show was revived on Fox and has run successfully ever since. And with that, Meg increasingly became the butt of the jokes in this period, quickly becoming the least popular member of the family within the context of the show. Is everyone on the phone? Oh, I gotta go. Something's in the oven. I lost a shoe. No, no, don't leave me on the phone with her. Stewie? In episodes like season 4's Don't Make Me Over, Meg's appearance caused people to literally light themselves on fire. But the episode was still largely about Meg as a regular human being, and one the family at least partly cared for. 
But even as that season progressed, the abuse of Meg elevated to a ridiculous degree, with Peter effectively selling Meg to cover his own expenses, setting a president she wouldn't be able to escape from for many seasons. Future episodes would take their punching down against the character to an extreme with Meg's own childhood teddy bear choosing death over spending time with her. Her family also left her in a jungle to die and just plain attack her any chance they got. Everybody spit on Meg! Stop! Stop! Ah! Even the universe itself seemed to have it in for Meg, transforming her backside into an interdimensional portal. Her status as the family's punching bag was solidified in season 4's Deep Throats, which saw Brian doing everything in his power to keep from becoming the new Meg. Yeah, you're the new me! Shut up, Meg. All of this wasn't necessarily by accident either, as series creator Seth MacFarlane has spoken about how the writers who were at that time predominantly male had trouble relating to Meg, leading to an increase of her abuse. The mistreatment of Meg by her parents reached ridiculous levels. Even her attempts to be as gross and goofy as the rest of the family was met with intense anger by Peter. I'm just trying to fit in. Get out! Get out of this house! It seems like nothing Meg did was good enough for the family, no matter how hard she tried. Who let you back in the house? All of these jokes coincided with Meg's relative lack of focus in plot lines compared to the rest of the Griffin family, especially as the show drifted further into overt parody and satire. How come I never get any lines in these things? Shut up, Meg. This increasingly diverted the show away from the more down-to-earth storylines that Meg would have previously been the centre of, and so she was becoming more and more distant in general plot lines. Even when Meg did get episodes all on her own, they'd often end poorly for her, like her failed romance with medical student Michael, or her attempts to embrace Christianity. However, Meg would soon fight back, and to talk about Meg finally standing up for herself, I invited Toon Rific Tariq on this channel. He is the biggest Family Guy fan I know, having done several videos over on his channel, so there's no one better to dissect this poor, poor character with. So take it away, Tariq. Meg might have started the show as the most relatively normal member of the Griffin family, but she definitely didn't stay that way. Shut up, Meg. The show constantly found ways, dark humor ways, to make fun of Meg's undateability. I'm so fat and gross! Aww. The revival years leaned increasingly into a slightly more demented Meg. My hair is in the pie, Brian. And now it's inside of you. Her attraction to both Brian and Joe would definitely hint at a more over-the-top obsessive side to her that we just hadn't seen before. She's been seen enjoying a nice picnic with a corpse, with each of these instances treated as just like a regular thing that happens in the world of Family Guy. When Lois tried to seduce her boyfriend in season 8, Meg didn't run off. She stood her ground and revealed how wild their relationship really was. I'll do anything. You don't know me! This was actually the period where Meg slowly began to stand up to her family, something that the earlier incarnation of the character would never even be capable of doing. Season 8's Doubt Meg for Murder saw Meg face consequences for her latest love interest, a prison inmate. After serving some time in jail herself, Meg comes out with a willingness to deal with all of her problems head on. She beats up her bullies, attacks her father, and genuinely becomes the primary force in her family's life for a change. Meg was eventually talked down from the ledge by Brian, but it was a good indicator of the kind of rage that just kind of simmers and boils up in Meg. Other episodes will see her lash out, beating a man senseless after being teased and egged on by Peter and his homies. This more defiant stance towards her family in general comes to a head in season 10's Seahorse Seashell Party. Oh boy, this one. While a hurricane traps them in the house, Meg finally lets loose with her anger over their treatment of her over the course of her life. Maybe show me some kind of kindness by not jumping on the Let's Get Meg family bandwagon? It's a rewarding scene for fans and for Meg herself finally to be able to stand up for herself, but afterwards, she just kind of quietly agrees to being the lightning rod for hate again. Meg in the modern day. 
Towards the end of the show's first decade, Meg's involvement in the show grew, and while she may still be the most downtrodden member of the family, she was at least getting involved in their shenanigans. Her darker side grew as well, to the point where Meg was dragging a corpse around as her new boyfriend. It allows Meg to at least not always be the butt of the joke, but instead be a part of the weirdness of the world around her, which is at least a big step up. This added dimension to her character would at least allow her that edge that many of the characters had for years, so it's all starting to level out a bit. While she's still neglected by her parents and regularly insulted at school, she's achieved some very great things. She competed in the Winter Olympic Games for one, and she at one point became so dangerous, the FBI went after her when she escaped her ankle tracker. Meg and Peter even got some warped family style closure within some episodes, such as in season 14's Peter's Sister, where the show introduced Peter's sister Karen, and Meg finally got to see her dad get a taste of his own medicine. Professional wrestler Karen was revealed to bully Peter just as much as he bullied Meg, to the point where the pair worked together to bring Karen down in a wrestling ring, therefore setting up somewhat of an understanding between the two. I still love you, Dad. I love you too, Meg. Since then, Peter is overall less confrontational with his daughter, with some exceptions. Okay. Meg, if this is you, what's your birthday? March 23rd. I have no idea if that's correct. They've even found an unlikely bond as drinking buddies, and he's been more willing to include her in their goofy antics, albeit in tougher spots than anyone else. He even fought a certain ex-president over his attempts to grow Meg. And in one of my favourite recent Peter and Meg storylines is when he becomes the school's new principal, and actually defends her against her bullies. While this doesn't excuse his awful treatment of Meg over the years, it's at least a huge step in the right direction. And overall, while Meg hasn't fully escaped the dark shadow that's been cast over her since the birth of the series, she's evolved into a character more fitting and most importantly accepted in the universe and her family. So there we have it folks, and a very special thank you to Tariq for helping me out with this one. The link to his channel is down in the description below.